So Visual Studio is a interesting animal, um, partly because Windows has no preset um, paths. So on Unix and Mac, we kind of know where things get installed. But on Windows, we can't even agree on the drive letter. So it could be on C drive, it could be on D drive, could, and then do you install stuff to program files or somewhere else? And so finding dependencies is actually really hard. So for this system, I've actually pre-installed all my third-party things into a directory called um, third-party um, Win32. And then inside Win32, I have my includes, and there's like all our dependency things, and then I got lib and bin and so forth. Now, the problem is that CMake doesn't necessarily know about that. So if I launch up the CMake GUI, um, we're going to do another out of source build. So I want to cheat a little bit here. I'm going to make the. Um, so first, I mounted the um, shared directory to the Y drive. So let me go find that first. And we went to CVS, and then here's our Chosky source. So second, um, we need to place the stuff somewhere. So before I was doing it right next to the um, other stuff, I found the small CMake bug where we get little weird errors. It actually works, but I don't want to confuse anyone showing you the errors. So I'm just going to um, build the stuff somewhere else on my um, hard drive. So I'm going to go build, and I don't know, let's call it uh, VS Chosky. OK, so now we're going to hit configure. And it says those directories don't exist, so we'll say yes. Now I'm going to get prompted for the type of uh, project. And we have all these different types of projects available to us for Windows. So I'm interested in Visual Studio, so I'm going to do that. And now it's going to start generating. Now because we didn't see, or CMake doesn't know where any of our third party stuff is, it's not going to auto detect and find all the components we need. So it's going to complain. And it's going to tell us that there's a whole bunch of stuff missing. And it's up to us to basically fill it in. And it's kind of a slow and tedious process. Um, OK, so here we go. So we got all these uh, error things here. Um, and you'll see that gdal include dir not found. All these not found things are that means they didn't find it. And um, you know, we got some other output here saying you know there are issues. Um, so basically, the one way around it is we can basically go in here. And then we can try to find all the stuff. So we can go to third party, and we can go to Win32, and go to glue, or, or um, include, hit OK. And then we go find the library. So we'll go to GDAL, and um, we'll go to uh, third party, Win32, lib, and then we'll find the GDAL library in here. And we'll hit that. And we do that again and again. And I assure you there's a lot more um, free type, um, glue, JPEG, libxml. So it gets a little tedious. We can do this. It's kind of a pain. Um, so let me show you a faster way, though. So we have two options. Um, but we're going to basically use Windows environmental variables. So first, let me uh, do this delete cache. So we'll just kind of reset it to um, a starting state. And then let me uh, quit out of this. So, um, uh, control four and let's exit. So, we have two options. We can um, one set up a global environmental variable, so we can go into a system. And we can go into um, advanced and then environmental variables. And so CMake has several different environmental variables it will listen to. So one is called CMake prefix path. And that basically says uh, where you might want any of your stuff if there's a, 
a lib directory and an include directory in there. So that, that's a good place. CMake will look at that for third-party dependencies. There's also CMake library path and CMake include path if you want to specify these um, separately where you don't have a common prefix. Um, now, so normally I just do a new and then create CMake underscore prefix underscore path. But actually, I don't want to change my system right now um, for various reasons. So I'd rather do this on a per instance basis. So this takes us to the other technique. So instead, what we can do is create a temporary uh, instance of the path. And so first, um, let's go up. And well, let's do it now. So we can set CMake prefix path in this command shell only. So once I close the shell, it won't, it won't persist. And then I'll set it to C colon slash third party slash 132. Oops. OK. So now if I run CMake from here, then it will inherit that prefix path and search that third party directory. So first, let me go to the out of source build directory. So I think I made it a build VS Chosky. And um, I don't think there's actually anything here. So we'll do cmake GUI. And then we need the path to the source. And when we do the GUI, we can pick uh, the project generation from the GUI itself. So I don't need to do a dash G switch. So we'll do Y. And then it's, uh, what was it? Y. CVS um, Chosky. So now we pull this up again. Now we're going to hit configure. We'll get prompted for the project. Now it's going to reconfigure. And if everything went right, we should hopefully find all the components. And you see that there's uh, no red error messages in this little console down at the bottom. So now, um, well, we can take a look. I think red means think something has changed since the last configure. I don't think it actually means there's an error up here. So now let's just hit configure. And configuring says done. And now this generate button comes available. So I'm just going to hit generate. And um, when this finishes, we should have a Visual Studio project. So now let me go back to my build directory. And so I made it in um, build Chosky or VS Chosky. And now I see a Chosky.solution. So I'm going to launch the solution. And that's our Visual Studio project. Now we currently have some issues with the uh, debug. So I'm actually recommending we do release with debug info if you need debug. And uh, this window is a little small. So you'll see that we have all our targets that we saw earlier. And so we can basically do a build on this. And it's going to start compiling. Uh, meanwhile, let's see. To actually run this thing, we need glue. and let me show you the output directory. So in VS Chosky, um, there should be a new build directory. Let me refresh. And there's a build directory now. And you'll see that this target now has a, um, a release with debug info subdirectory. And all the products will be built here. So as they're being built, um, they'll appear there. Now, if we want to run in here, we, we need a DLL. We need the glue DLL. So um, I'm just going to copy it into that directory. So I know my glue is here. And I think I put it in bin. And I'm going to copy this into that directory. So meanwhile, we'll let this uh, build and then we'll continue.